Hey guys, it's Kay from KS Anonymous, and I am back today with another episode of r slash choosing beggars. Friend got mad that my phone wasn't working properly. Don't know if this counts, but yeah, this happened in like 2013 when I was in college, but reading these posts made me remember it. So I'm not into technology at all. I use a laptop constantly for everything I need, and at the time would sometimes bring it into college for my free periods. I hate using any sort of other tech and find it difficult to use or adjust to. Not big on brands either. So I'd had several basic phones always handed down from my dad when he updated his. In 2010, I broke the phone I had and he wasn't due to update his, I didn't have a birthday coming up, and my part-time job wasn't enough to outright buy one, so my dad said he'd pay £70 toward a phone for me. So I had one for safety, walking from school, etc. Great deal for me, so I chose a £70 Samsung. Couple years pass, and despite rarely using it, it does need replacing. The text function stopped working and would either not send messages at all, would send them multiple times at random times, or not receive messages. Complete pain, but I rarely texted and used to just call if I needed something. I used to rarely even take my phone out with me and would often forget it at home because I barely ever used it. A friend of mine had broke his phone and wanted to borrow mine to text someone, non-emergency. I told him my text function was messed up at the best of times, but he could try calling, and I had a bit of credit that should cover the call. He grabbed my phone and walked off with it, so I followed. He made the call, but either due to my phone or the rubbish signal in college, was struggling to hear the other person, and the call cut out. He then hit my phone against the wall next to him. I was like, dude, WTF, give my phone back and he started having a go at me about how crap my phone was and why couldn't I have a decent smartphone like everyone else. I just walked away. Yeah, my phone was crap, but I don't care, and it's mine. I'm not paying for a phone I won't use so other people can easily make calls, LMAO. Choosy bread beggars ruined it all. So this post is old but relevant, and since I'm seeing a decent amount of non-CV content in here, I thought I would help. My dad used to have face-to-face -face interactions with a baker because of his job, and got to know the baker, and upon finding that my dad had a large family, the baker told my father he had day-olds, baguettes, loaves, rolls, bagels, at the end of every day, and my dad was welcome to take what he needed. So my dad did, and I loved eating those baguettes. Not stale by any means, but not the freshest. I have vivid memories of heating up baguettes and putting butter on them. Anyways, my dad would thank the baker in the form of gift cards and thank you cards from us kids. So the baker started giving to more people in the community, a very selfless guy, and then about six months later, it stopped. So apparently, one of the families he'd been giving to had been asking for specific breads, non-day-old stuff, and complaining about the quality and finally attempting to sell the bread to one of the baker's customers. I remember he felt horrible telling my dad he couldn't do this anymore. One bad apple ruins the bunch. But I remember my dad thanking him for the months we'd been blessed with the baker's kindness and then essentially explaining to me what a choosy beggar was. Definitely my first memory of CBs, unfortunately not my last. And that's always the worst when basically some one person's stupidity just one just kind of messes up the person who was being kind and then messes up their kindness for other people it's just you are spreading such uh, so many bad things and hurting so many people when you choose to be a choosing beggar coronavirus flavored specimen had to cancel my wedding in washington parents paid for everyone's flights i sent notices to guests get this back from my brother's girlfriend I understand that you're concerned about Washington and the virus, but going forward, I would appreciate if you would talk to me before making decisions like canceling my plane ticket. I had other plans for my time there, including seeing UW and visiting family. Now I have to go off work and nowhere to go. I know it comes from a place of concern, but just please keep me informed next time. Communication is a big thing for me. Yeah, how about you don't use my parents for a free vacation? Hmm. <laughs> uh. 
Oh, fan upset at DJ for having his three-year-old merch on sale. I'm ticked that I paid $35 for a t-shirt at the first Lost Lands and it's on your merch site for $20? Why you gotta do me like that? Thanks for contacting me, Eric. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Dion. Everything is on sale right now. The Lost Lands collection was more expensive when it first came out. Grateful Dead did that to me too for Chicago 2015. Bought a blanket jersey and t-shirts, but then they were on the website half off after. Makes me not want to purchase merch from you in the future, boy. Step it up. Thumbs down. Didn't even offer to send me something to make up for it? Or a partial refund? You must not really care about your fans or early supports. Bruh. <laughs> It's old merch, like, obviously when things first come out, they're more expensive, and over time, they might get cheaper, or they might stay the same price, it just kind of depends. A lot of times, the older the stuff, the more it's going to drop in price, like, this is, <laughs> this is just how this works. Wow. A gem from about a year ago. While looking for a new job, I encountered this entry-level position. Unfortunately, I am not qualified for the position and had to look elsewhere. Posted March 6, 2019. Level, entry level. Work function, post doctoral research. Discipline, chemistry. Preferred education, doctorate. Preferred qualifications. 1. Degree in physical chemistry or related field. 2. Demonstrated experience in the development and coding of high performance computing methods. 3. Demonstrated experience in multiple programming languages, software cycles, modern computer architectures, and use of repository software. 4. Experience in development of quantum mechanical theoretical methods and research techniques, including the ability to develop, test, and use computer programs using excellent software engineering techniques. Number 5. Experience with embedding methods. Number 6. Experience in working with theoretical and com computational scientists and engineers in fields related to software design and implementation. Number 7. Extensive experience with the latest versions of Python and C++. And number 8. Demonstrated ability to deliver excellent software products. If that's entry level, I think we're all screwed. <laughs> I have run a consulting business for nearly 30 years. Last year, I got a call from a company in Toronto. They wanted to bring me on for a six-month contract. To qualify, I needed 15 plus years of progressive experience, a computer science or engineering degree, specific experience in a laundry list of tools and software, specific experience in this kind of work, and at least one professional certification. I told them it sounded interesting and quoted them 1100 a day plus travel and living, basically the standard rate for consulting for this stuff. I said there was a bit of wiggle room on that depending on the terms and conditions. They said that was way too expensive. They had a budget of $20 an hour, but could maybe go to $22.50. I asked how they expected to get a senior level and specific experience at that price, and they said it was an entry-level position. Yeah, there's a lot of entry levels that require 15 years experience and a freaking engineering degree. I wish them good luck. As far as I know, it never got staffed. Go figure. $20 an hour for a senior person in Toronto? Still makes me giggle thinking about it. Free tattoo sound like a good idea, right? Seeking tattoo. Free. Seeking new artist with moderate skill that would like to do a few pieces on me. I could not pay, but would be good practice for someone who wants to build their experience. Prefer black and gray, but also welcome color. Working full time, but seem to only be able to pay bills than broke. Sadly, no tattoo money. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna want to get any of the tattoos offered to you under that condition. <laughs> well, yes and no. You said you needed a card. You said you needed it for school. Because I do need it for school. So I am being honest. But you don't need an iPhone for school, do you? In fact, I'm not sure if you need a phone at all, assuming you have access to a laptop or iPad. But I do know how it's like without a phone. 
I don't have access to a laptop or an iPad and I need an iPhone for school. You don't live in USA, so you don't know my school system. I've read about it. I know how is it like. I also know that it's a status symbol, but not a necessity. And I also know that not all schools use laptops or iPads, etc. You know, whatever. Take any more screenshots and I'll block you. It wouldn't be the first time you'd block me. I guess it's by then. Yeah, because you're always being an A. An A. By B. Shoot, your bitmoji was on the way. So, what I love about this is that, <laughs> is that, like, you don't know my school system. I'm in the USA. I need an iPhone. Like, I don't know any place that would require you to have an iPhone in the US. I'm just saying. I want creative logo plus printable resolution version plus 3D mockup plus stationary designs plus social media kit plus vector file plus business card. My budget, $5. I want a custom creative logo. Something that does not exist currently. I have placed several gig orders before and did not receive a custom creative logo. I need a unique logo created for an American restaurant and lounge called Ivy Kitchen and Cocktails, located in the USA Detroit, Michigan. Ivy is located in an urban area in the 5th District of Detroit, Michigan, with multicultural population in the United States. I am seeking an upscale, yet urban vibe for this logo. Please have unique and creative ideas if you're going to reply to this post. Please don't plan to send me any stock or existing logo formats, I've seen them all before. I want a custom logo, something that does not exist currently. I need different variations. I'd like a couple ideas to choose from. I'm looking for luxury, elegance, and sophistication. Must include the following extras. Source file logo, transparency, printable resolution file, include 3D mockup, stationary designs, include social media kit, vector file, banner, business card. For five dollars? <laughs> Good luck with that. Guy wants five companies to compete for his business, but he's paying half what the job is worth. Bonus startup company. Custom gaming machine? Love your website, by the way. Hilarious and well put together. I've sent a similar email to four other companies, minus the compliments on the website. I'm looking for a custom bespoke machine for my startup company. I like what you have, but I want something a little different styling-wise and graphics-wise. What I would like from the five companies in total is to design me a unique cabinet and artwork. I'm not sure what exactly I want, but I'll know it when I see it. If I like your design, you have my business and a horde of potential customers. I say horde because my company name is blank and they will come in hordes, believe me. Before you panic, just know that I'm paying for this. My budget is $1,400. I would like the following. Custom design of cabinet and at work, full design wrap front and sides, 32 inch screen, sand wall buttons and controllers, a good sound system, minimum of an i5 PC, no Dell systems. The rest is up to you guys to impress me enough that I'll go with you. The winner gets the business and all the exposure that comes with an exciting new startup company that already- <laughs> Oh god, okay. <clears throat> that already has 1,000 followers on social media. <clears throat> Good luck. Hi. No. Good luck. Hi. Well, it's definitely a lost opportunity on your behalf. May I ask why, though? No, it's not. Yes, you may. Well, why? I'm not sure if you're joking. An off-the-shelf machine at the specs you want is worth 2.5k. You want us to spend a day or so designing a custom one for you on a maybe, and you'll pay 1400 if we win your crappy competition? Can you see why I'm not doing the electric slide right now, dude? Come up with another $1,100 plus design fee, and we'll talk about how busy I am and how I can't do it anyway. Jeez, man. A thousand followers in general isn't necessarily something to laugh about. But when we're talking about... They're probably adding up all across social media. So they're, they're counting, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook whatever else they might use, putting them all together and saying, we already have a thousand followers. Um, that's really not a good look. <laughs> that's not, that's, that's, 
that's nothing on the internet now. Um, uh, quite a while ago, that might have been something to brag about, but it's just not, you know. My free ticket wouldn't cover his lunchtime. This morning, I went to the city center to post some packages. The minimum amount of time you can pay for in the closest parking lot is two hours, and then goes up in two-hour increments, and the ticket displays no info about what vehicle it was purchased for. The post office was emptier than usual, so it only took me 15 minutes to do what I needed, leaving a good hour and 45 minutes left on my ticket. When I was leaving, I saw a man checking his wallet for change next to the machine. He asked me if I had any change, and I replied that I didn't have any because I had paid with a card, but that if he wanted, there was some time left in mine, and he could use it. He happily said yes, so I went to my car, grabbed my ticket, and handed it to him. What a mistake. First, he said that the ticket didn't have enough time on it. He was going shopping, and he planned to have lunch later on. I pointed out that he could easily spend an hour 45 minutes shopping, and then come back with some change, buy another ticket, and then go for some lunch. Apparently, that wouldn't do, because then he would have lunch late. Then he asked if I could buy him a ticket for four hours with my card. I said no, told him that he could use the ticket I had given him if he wanted, or pay for another one himself, and walked away. My ears are still ringing from the abuse. Guy wanted one of my puppies, told me weeks ago that she was for his daughters to have a protector. I've been waiting to get the deposit from him. I sent a pic today, and suddenly he's guilt-tripping me, wanting a puppy donated for his service dog work that he has never mentioned before. I had a fellow soldier commit three days ago, number 15 from my platoon. I will not put dogs in front of my fellow veterans. I need to work harder on finding refuge for my brothers. If you want to donate one for the cause, your name will be one of the first to gain notices from the VA and our government. Heck, we might even hire you as a breeder for veterans with disabilities. I'm sorry for your loss, man. I'm a veteran in the disabled vet community. If I want to donate, I can privately, but thank you. I don't trust many of the programs I work with people. Let me know if you decide to purchase a puppy. This won't be one of those programs. We're here to fight those programs and install new greater programs. Sorry, uh, but I can't donate. I can do 800 for the puppy, 400 deposit, and 400 at pickup. Especially since you've consistently said this dog was for your kids, and the first time you've mentioned anything about service dog was when asking for a donation. I'll let you know. Can I see the 501c3 paperwork, customer testimonials, and website for your program? Shocker that there is no response to that. Sometimes I really wish that awards could be withdrawn. As a reward, you get a silvery medal on your submission. And that's it. Want to say thanks to your mysterious benefactor? Reply to this message. You will find out their username if they choose to reply back. Warning, responding to this message will reveal your username to the guildee. Hi, gay. Reddit Silver, WTF kind of cheapo you are. Can you give me a platinum? Silver doesn't give me crap. Useless Redditor. Yeah. I wish they could be withdrawn too. Caught one in the wild. Gotta love a good sob story. $200 sold. Let me know. I can pay with PayPal instantly. Nah, 350 lowest. I've come out of domestic violence marriage and left some things behind. Not my problem. How rude are you? Wow. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, like, like, look, you know, I, I understand having empathy, but being like, I can give you this prize, but like, if you don't accept my offer, now I'm going to tell you things that'll make you, like, give it to me. So it's like... <laughs> Technically, that's not their problem. Like, I'm sorry that that happened, but, you know. Anyway, that is going to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and drop a like. And let me know your thoughts about all of these in the comments below. And if you've run into any choosing beggars of late um, in your endeavors at, I suppose, just grocery stores and other essential locations uh, during this <clears throat> interesting time, Real quick, I would like to thank my patrons. Up on the screen, you should see my face, Palmers. 
and my crazy case. Thank you all so much for supporting me in that way. If you're interested in becoming a patron, checking out the original posts from the stories and images and everything that we went over in today's video, or sending me an email for possible inclusion in a future video, all of that will be in the description box, so be sure to check that out. And I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye!